Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about hyperemesis gravidarum. So the definition of this is a little bit hard to find, but uh, this is uh, nausea and vomiting taken to the extreme during the first um, trimester of pregnancy or beyond. So most people have some nausea and vomiting in their first trimester, over 50 to 90 percent. But hyperemesis gravidarum, as defined um, I think in this study is having more than 5% weight loss happens only in about 1%. We'll talk about some more other ways that we can define the difference between these two. So some of the risk factors include super tasters. Sorry, this isn't that common, but it's on my list because I, I'd never heard of it before. This is just people who have a very exaggerated sense of taste. And uh, those who have nausea with uh, exogenous estrogen at other times are, are going to be more likely to have hyperemesis gravidarum. Uh, first gestation or um, a multiple gestation pregnancy. Molar pregnancies have a lot of this nausea and vomiting. Um, people who don't take vitamins before, people with heartburn, um, female fetuses actually do make you sicker. That's not just an old wives tale. And not that I'm recommending you drink or smoke, but you are less likely to have hyperemesis gravidarum if you drink or smoke. So the pathophysiology is still being worked on a little bit. We traditionally thought of it as being caused by increased amounts of uh, estradiol or progesterone. Now we're leaning more towards beta HCG as being the major hormone that's associated with it. There is certainly a psychological uh, component in there that's a little bit hard to tease out where the uh, emotional response starts and the uh, hormonal factors end. But uh, abnormal GI motility and, GI and H. pylori have also been associated with this. So usually it's going to present within the first uh, five to six weeks and go to around 16 to 20 weeks. But uh, hyperemesis gravidarum can go throughout the whole pregnancy, um, usually ending uh, at least after, after birth. If it's going on for a long time after birth, um, I think the number is over a week after birth, then you want to definitely do a full workup for other potential causes. So a lot of times there will be some weight loss here. Um, if it is indeed hyperemesis gravidarum, uh, dehydration and constipation, altered sense of taste, uh, sensitivity of the brain to motion. So these people get headaches, um, they're stressed out, they get sub subconjunctival hemorrhage, uh, difficulty with daily ac activities, and in some cases hallucinations. So the clinical uh, diagnosis of uh, HG includes that 5% weight loss that I've mentioned a couple times. Again, nobody's really nailed this down um, in any of the articles that I, I saw. There, This wasn't necessarily a hard and fast rule that everybody accepts, but it is the number I saw the most. Uh, ketonuria, orthostatic hypotension, and then we have a couple of these rating scores. I didn't go into reading exactly how they worked. Um, because it looks like they're used more often for research purposes than they are in, in a clinical practice. But I think some OBs will use them in clinical practice just uh, to help decide how to treat it. So some of the tests we want to run is certainly a beta HCG. Uh, we expect these numbers to be a little bit high uh, on the beta HCG, but if they're real high, then we start thinking about molar pregnancies. Um, which of course we're going to do an ultrasound anyway, and so we're going to we're going to look for those molar pregnancies. Um, a CBC, you might get some uh, increased uh, hem hemoglobin hematocrit just because we are fluid depleted. Uh, electrolytes, um, you can get hypokalemia and hypochloremic alkalosis from all the uh, vomiting up your acidic stomach contents. Urine ketones are a sign of starvation, and uh, this is a form of starvation if we're not getting enough nutrients in. 
Um, abnormal AST, ALT, I don't remember why I put that in there. Uh, amylase and lipase should be elevated, but not because of the pancreas. Uh, you remember that we produce these also in the uh, salivary glands, so look for those to be elevated as well. So on our differential diagnosis is essentially anything that makes you nauseous or make, makes you vomit, which um, is a super, uh, super broad um, differential. So really, I mean, we could do pages of this, what's on your differential diagnosis. So you want to look for some of the, the big causes. Um, take a good history to see if there's any chemicals that we're ingesting, any drugs. Um, infectious uh, usually is going to be associated with some other symptoms, you know, like uh, you, you may have malaise, rash, other things that might make you think of infection. Um, there are inflammatory causes that I believe are all often better during pregnancy, like ulcerative colitis, um, Crohn's disease. And you, again, you'd probably have a history before the pregnancy. Um, CNS causes like tumors and, and other causes can make you nauseous and, and have uh, vomiting. So that's another reason why you want to be uh, particularly sensitive to other symptoms that are associated with it. And if it's not going away after pregnancy, then you, you want to do a full workup. Uh, malignancy included in there. Um, psychiatric, uh, some people would probably say that all of this has a psychiatric component to it, uh, but just make sure to take a good psychiatric history as well. So to treat it, um, if we're talking about just mild nausea and vomiting, let's start with the, the dietary things. Um, small frequent meals, Snacks in bed, that would be snacks before you get up, um, like uh, eat some crackers in bed before you get up. Uh, they suggest largely protein-dominant diets. I'm not sure what the patho or the physiology of that is, um, but things that don't smell very much. And if you're going to be drinking, or you make sure you're drinking a lot of um liquids and the liquids that usually stay down the best are going to be uh, cold clear carbonated liquids a lot of times sour liquids so like um, like a ginger ale or lemonade is often uh, supposed to be pretty good avoid the things that make you want to throw up um, like your husband for example or other uh, things that smell bad um, some uh, people have had good success with acupuncture, hypnosis, and ginger, and I think there's even some decent uh, data that shows that those are effective. So medical treatment, of course, you can use the you want to use the diet diet treatment with severe disease as well. But that's if, when we start using medicine is if we are concerned about too much weight loss or starvation, possible risk to the fetus. So we're going to check the fluid and electrolytes and, and correct them. Um, and the first thing that we're going to do is give B6, pyridoxine. Um, it says here not for hyperemesis gravidarum. It hasn't been shown to be effective uh, with uh, severe disease, but we usually give it anyway. Um, doxylamine is your second line here. Doxylamine is one of the antihistamines. So you go to B6, then you go to doxylamine. If that's not working, um, then you can break out your promethazine. Um, and from there, uh, you can go to like metoclopramide, so one of the dopamine agonists. So I've kind of got them in order here, uh, antihistamines to dopamine agonists. And then you save your serotonin antagonists for, for more severe diseases. So... On Dancitron, you kind of wait till till it's getting getting bad and and not responding to any of these other treatments. Um, acid reducing agents can help if there is a GERD component of it, um, and just make sure that uh, you're getting adequate nutrition. So, in some of these severe cases, you may may want to do parental nutrition. Um, and if it gets really bad, then there's uh, chlorpromazine and glucocorticoids that you can use. So uh, follow up if, uh, if, it doesn't pers if it doesn't stop with the uh, end of pregnancy. 
and uh, daily multivitamins can help uh, prevent disease in the future. So that's something to to make sure you, all your patients are doing is getting their daily multivitamin to to help prevent disease. Um, that's it for this topic. If you want to help out the project here, uh, leave a quick question in the comments that would test the next person who watches the video um, on the content of the video. Um, so just go into the comment and write a quick question about what you just learned. And then uh, share the video with others, or if you really want to get involved, go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer. Thanks.